Hello and welcome to another episode of Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry, and today we'll be talking to my colleague Mackenzie Mills, the Associate Product Manager here at the company. Today, Mackenzie will be talking to us about visualizing 3D data. All right, Mackenzie, take it away. So the display of 3D data in Global Mapper is actually pretty easy to accomplish. Right here in this workspace, I have some 2D vector features loaded. These are some building footprints for an urban area. And to view the 3D viewer in Global Mapper, I'm just going to open it from the analysis toolbar. This opens as a floating pane window where I can move the data around, I can resize the window, and even dock this 3D viewer window in my Global Mapper interface. Now looking here and moving the data around, we're just seeing those building footprints, these 2D features displayed in the 3D viewer. To add a little more information, get some 3D data in there, I'll turn on the display of a terrain grid that I have in this workspace. And here we're seeing those 2D vector features on top of this 3D data now. We can see the 3D nature of this data in the 3D viewer and we can see it shaded by elevation. Now to change the visualization of this data a little bit, I can change the shader for the elevation grid that I have displayed, the terrain. I can use a global shader or any of the other built-in shaders that we have, um, like the daylight shader, which uses a single color for all the elevation values, or the gradient shader, which shows a grayscale for the different elevation values. I can even create a custom shader through the configuration settings in Global Mapper. I have a coastal custom shader here that I'll apply, and that gives me a little differentiation for this coastal area between the water, the lower elevations, and the land areas. So now we have our two layers displayed in the Global Mapper 2D and 3D view, and I can use the feature info tool to look at the information associated with some of these vector features. Now, these are just 2D features right now. I haven't chosen to apply an elevation or use an elevation with them, but looking at the attributes through the feature info tool, I see that there is a height roof attribute here. Since these are building footprints, we have a height value associated. In order to use that height value as an elevation to extrude these features and show them as 3D buildings in my 3D view, I can go to the vector layer options for this layer, go to the elevations tab and choose to use that height root attribute as the elevation and choose to use that relative to ground. So relative to the terrain surface that I have displayed here. Applying that setting, we see that these buildings are now extruded from the surface. They look like little building models in the 3D view, even though they're just derived from those 2D footprint vector features that we started with. I have a slight transparent um, visualization applied to these features, and that is carried over into the 3D viewer. So when I'm looking at overlapping buildings, I can see some of the buildings behind the buildings in the foreground. And Global Mapper does a great job rendering these buildings exactly, rendering all of the corners, all of the complexities of these features, including holes in those features for courtyards and other features um, associated with these buildings. For an added layer of context to this 3D visualization of this data, I can go ahead and turn on an imagery layer that I have for this area. This drapes the imagery over the 3D terrain layer that I have, and it appears underneath that those extruded building layers. So I have a lot of information now displayed in the 2D and 3D views where I can get some really nice and realistic oblique views of this particular area. Mackenzie, thank you so much for demonstrating that to our users. I know that they'll find it useful in their everyday workflows. To learn more about Global Mapper and Global Mapper Pro, please visit our website at bluemarblegeo.com today. And as always, I hope that you'll join us for our next episode of Ask the Experts.